What's up drivers? Bobby C here with DIY Trucker and this video is for those of you who are contemplating getting their own ICC authority or DOT number as they call it now. And I'm going to give you the biggest causes for failure to those who run under their own authority and under their own name. Well, you think you want to get your own ICC authority or DOT number? Well, I'm going to give you five of the biggest causes for failures and five areas that is the hardest to compete with these mega carriers. And competition is the main reason for failure. It's very difficult to compete with these carriers that can do things a lot cheaper per truck than you can as a small company. I'm going to go into those areas. And before I get into these areas, I'm gonna give you guys some statistics. And I'm gonna cite an article that's about two years old that I read in Transport Topics. It goes through the number of failures as far as those that have gotten their own ICC authority or DOT numbers are calling it now. Out of every thousand applicants that are granted authority, 725 of those will have failed in the first 12 months. That leaves 275, and out of those, another 100 will fail in the next six months or the first 18 months. That leaves 175, and out of those, only 84, less than 1% of those that are granted authority actually make it to 24 months. Now you can interpret these numbers any way you want to, but there's no getting around that this is a tough business and it's got a very high failure rate. Now I want to give you some background. I had my own authority. I had a fleet of trucks uh, and some of these areas that I'm going to go into with you is what caused me to become a fleet owner and a sales agent for Landstar. Now, I'm no longer a fleet owner or an agent with Landstar. I'm down to one truck, and I'm doing very well at another company, and that's a video for another day. The number one reason for failure or the cause of failure to small companies starting out with their own authority is insurance. Insurance for a new company that doesn't have a liability insurance track record is going to be super high. You're looking at minimum thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month depending on your driving record uh, per unit and that is a big hill to climb when you're competing with these big carriers that are self-insured that are doing things a lot cheaper their insurance cost is is a lot less than yours and i'm going to make another video explaining the different types of insurance the per unit insurance the gross receivables insurance and the self-insured insurance and how that works and how it plays into being able to compete amongst other carriers especially larger carriers and the number two reason is the cost of fuel it's harder to compete with these big guys when they're paying 20 to 30 cents less per gallon and I really didn't think there was that much markup, but I'm actually leased to a company now that allows me to buy my fuel at their cost. And I'm gonna show you an image here of uh, Mossy Point, Mississippi here in the first week of March of 2018. And you can see uh, the price there is 231.7. Now in full disclosure, that is pre-tax. I do not have to pay fuel tax where I'm at. The company that I'm with takes care of the fuel tax. So you add in the uh, fuel tax, uh, you still have a, a significant 20, 25 cent a gallon savings. And I'm gonna show you the image of the live at the pump price right now in Mossy Point, Mississippi at the pilot. As you can see, when you add back in the fuel tax, it's a big saving. So it just makes it even harder to compete with these guys that have lower cost than you do. And the third area uh, that causes failure is establishing freight lanes and establishing direct customers. A lot of people think, well, I can just run the DAP board or go broker to broker to broker on all my loads. And I suggest 
that you have at least 50% of all your freight and revenue generated by direct billing, where you're billing a customer directly. If you can't get to that 50% mark, you're losing a lot of money. Now granted, even the big companies use brokers, so you're never gonna be able to totally do away with getting broker freight, but you need to establish a good core of your business as direct bill. And I'm gonna make a video about that, about how to uh, approach these companies and establish sales sheets and rate sheets and, and the best way to, uh, to establish freight lanes and, and how to analyze those things. So be looking for that video coming down the pike pretty soon. And the fourth area that causes failure is compliance, not keeping up with compliance. Having a big if to bill. I see so many of these carriers that that don't think about their fuel tax and they're getting an if to bill and they don't pay it and then their if to gets canceled and or or they're not keeping track of their logs and, and keeping records and files. There's a lot of compliance for these governmental agencies and record keeping that's required. And there are companies out there that you can hire as a small company that can do these things for you. But then again, that's just adding more cost that these big carriers don't have. They're able to spread out their cost over a lot of trucks and they're paying a whole lot less per unit per month on their compliance than you are as a small carrier. And the fifth thing is financials, the financing, the money. Most people that get into this business and get their own authority do not have enough money up front to cash flow their business until they can start generating some cash flow from the customer's invoices. And I always suggest that you have at least 60 days worth of operating costs in the bank. So it's gonna take a big bankroll before you even get started. And what's gonna happen is if you don't have that much money, you're gonna be forced into what's called factoring or accounts receivables financing. And I'm gonna make a video about the details of what that really is and how to navigate those things and, and, and to understand what factoring is. But you have to realize that these factoring companies are gonna get three to 5%, depending on the credit rating of the customer, per invoice. And most of these customers will pay in 30 days. So if you factor in 3% on a 30 day invoice as a interest fee, that works out to about a 36% interest rate. Heck, it's better to use a credit card than to get into factoring. And I'm gonna go over some of those things because you've seen the ads, no chargebacks. Uh, we buy your invoices. That, that's partially true. I'm gonna give you some quick information on what that really means. Most factoring companies only give you anywhere from 70 to 80% of the invoice amount up front immediately in what they call an advance. And they hold the remainder of that to when the customer pays. And then when the customer pays, they deduct their fees and give you the rest. So if a customer doesn't pay, and most contracts, now I understand that there's different contracts out there. If a customer doesn't pay, uh, you don't have to pay that advance back, but you're not gonna get the rest of that invoice. So it's not a true purchase, and they word it carefully, make it sound like it's a purchase of the invoice, but they actually say no chargebacks, meaning you don't have to pay the advance back. And I'm gonna interview in, a, in an upcoming video a major factoring company, and I'm gonna ask the questions that you should ask when you're calling a factoring company, because some of you guys may have to do it. But if you do do it, you need to make it short term and have a good financial plan together uh, for your accounts receivables financing if you don't have the bankroll up front to fund your operating costs until you get revenue coming in. I hope that this helps you and gives you a, a, a good idea of what to expect and, and the things and the areas that cause failure. So I applaud anybody that wants to have an entrepreneurial spirit and go out there and get their own authority and, and do things and to make themselves better. Even though it's something that I would advise against, I still want to give those that are going to do it anyway all the information 
that they they need to make a, an educated decision. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Good running with you, and Bobby C. checking out.